right now on a special edition of Full Force Nature. Batten down the hatches. Hurricanes are about to hit. We start with a man who stays behind during Hurricane Katrina and watches his neighborhood disintegrate before his eyes. Four houses gone. Next, two men are in the struggle for their lives when they fight to find shelter during Hurricane Charlie. We are hanging on for our lives. Then, shrimp fishermen send out a distress call when Hurricane Claudette takes their boat to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Extreme weather, told by the people who survived. Whoa, baby. Right now, on Full Force Nature. Hurricanes can terrorize coastal areas with heavy winds, high surge, and unrelenting rains. For those who live in their path, these storms are part of life, a part that sometimes gets out of control. Louisiana's coastal area is one of the most unique and picturesque parts of the United States. Nestled against the Gulf Coast, its proximity to the sea is both a blessing and a curse. Kennard and Dookie Jackley live just off Lake Pontchartrain in Slidell, Louisiana, and love their life on the water. It's just like being on a ship at sea, because you can go from the back, my back door, to anywhere in the world if you had a big enough boat, you know? But in late August 2005, the Jackleys learned that Hurricane Katrina is bearing down in their home and the greater New Orleans area. When it started getting into the Gulf, the more we watched, the more we could see it was coming straight north, you know? Dookie evacuates and takes the family dog to Dallas. Kennard decides to remain at home and hunker down with the cat. It's the day before the big show. Everything looking good. Water's supposed to get up to that high. I don't think so. Just a few hours later, Katrina and its winds in excess of 100 miles per hour push on shore. Kennard grabs his video camera. Mother Nature's a mad mammy jammer. Well, the wind started blowing first and when it pine trees started falling down. I said, oh man, it's gonna be something. There they are on top of the boathouse. Then the water starts to rise. I thought because we never had water here before, I figured, uh, I figured it wouldn't be as bad as it was, but I don't know where all that water came from. You got white caps in my backyard here. A huge storm surge easily floods the shore of nearby Lake Pontchartrain. In a matter of a few hours, dry land is swallowed by dark, violent waters. And they said this was gonna be a mother. This is a mother. The floodwaters quickly rise to unheard of levels. Oh, Mother Nature is angry, my friend. Top and I had my truck parked underneath my house and it started floating and started pounding up when the water and waves come across. It started pounding uh, the bottom of my floor. I can feel the floor shaking. Kennard then looks outside and gets the surprise of his life. There were four houses over there. Now they're gone. Kennard now realizes his house could be next. I'm in a two-story house, it's lapping at my bottom door here. Woo! The water came up a couple feet, then three feet, then five feet, and the next thing you know, I got two feet left before it comes in the house. Here it comes up the front door, broke the front door. And then when it busted the door down in the, in the front, and uh, it started coming up my stairs, and then it started to uh, come inside the house on the second story. I said, well, it's all over now. Never thought I'd die this way. If I had 30 years at sea and I didn't drown out there, I didn't think I could drown on dry land. 
the water inches up to the second story, 15 feet above the ground. Kennard is now trapped inside his house with no way out. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. Me and Miss Kitty are jammed in here, man. Here it comes. It's in the house. When I opened that door and seen the water coming up, there was no way to stop it, you know. Luckily, I found some long nails, and I just pounded the door shut. You don't look good for the home team. Even during the darkest hour, Kennard keeps a sense of humor. I got a good view of the lake now. Well, I was kind of at the mercy of the elements because when stuff started floating by, there was nothing, you know, nothing you could do about it. Man, when's this thing gonna stop, man? God, doggy. After enduring hours of torrential downpour, the winds finally let up. Kennard is lucky to be alive. Well, I used to have a yard out there. No, it's a junkyard. And then the water started to recede a little bit, so I figured I was pretty safe after that. His house, unlike many others in the immediate area, is made with reinforced concrete to prevent it from floating away. I had confidence in that building standing up. These people here, I don't know if, if they would have stayed, uh, they would have all been dead. By the next morning, the remnants of Katrina have passed, and the sky is clear. But Kennard has lost all power and can't get in touch with anybody. It's like living, living in a igloo or something, you know? I don't know what was happening around me. In Dallas, his wife, Dookie, fears the worst. In my heart, I thought he was gone. I thought he had died. I really did, and my daughter kept saying, Mom, he's alive. Mom, don't worry, he's alive. Working on my tan. After two days holed up in his house, Kennard spots emergency workers patrolling the neighborhood. They stopped and came up to the door, and I says, uh, how about calling my bride over there in, uh, in Texas? We got a phone call. It's Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries, and my heart sunk. I just thought for sure that they were going to tell me that Kennard was gone. First thing he said to me was, he's alive, he's alive. That's all you get for today, boys. In the days that follow, Kennard becomes a one-man animal rescue squad, feeding ducks, birds, and saving a neighborhood dog that was trapped in mud for days. Boy, he ain't had nothing to drink in about three or four days. Kennard contemplates the destruction of his neighborhood. First time out of the house. Holy Christ, look at this place. They had sailboats down there sitting on top of the road, and uh, I couldn't believe that. And you can't even see a trace of some of the houses where they used to be just the slab is the only thing left on them. Even months later, the damage is nowhere close to being cleaned up. Back here was the... Uh, was the boathouse. Of course, now it's nothing but a bunch of pilings. Everything is gone. Mother Nature, I can't believe you did this to us, you dirty double-crosser. Despite their experiences, the Jackleys plan to stay in Slidell. Yeah, this is home. I can't believe this place. But Kennard might have second thoughts about riding out another hurricane here. If it gets to be like this again, get out of Dodge. Don't mess with Mother Nature. Coming up on this special hurricane edition of Full Force Nature, the Coast Guard takes on Hurricane Claudette in an effort to find fishermen lost at sea. But first, join two men as they struggle to get out of harm's way when Hurricane Charlie comes through. Welcome back to Full Force Nature's Hurricane Special. August 2004. Veteran storm chaser Jim Reed and meteorologist Greg Zamoripa join forces in Florida to document Hurricane Charlie, a projected Category 2 hurricane. 
It's Friday, August 13th. Uh, we are in Punta Gorda, Florida, awaiting the arrival of Hurricane Charlie. The mood was actually fairly light. Uh, we were still planning on uh, documenting the effects of wind on coconut palm trees uh, during a Category 2 hurricane. But on this Friday the 13th, the team's luck begins to change. They receive news that Charlie has developed into a Category 3 hurricane. I had incredible butterflies at the time. I thought, oh my gosh, this, this is serious. The only hurricane strengths I'd been in were Category 1 and Category 2. But once you start getting into Category 3 and then 4 and beyond, it, it's, it's very dangerous. We were all the way down there. It was just a little bit too late to get out of the situation. As the hurricane begins to approach Punta Gorda, Florida, the winds and rain intensify, but retain a manageable Category 1 force. Okay, this is what it is looking like as Hurricane Charlie is uh, coming into Punta Gorda. Though the team is accustomed to working in such weather conditions with flying debris, they begin to scout for the shelter they will need later. We just knew that once this came in, you could not be in the wide open. You had to be in shelter. We had two spots, a car wash uh, with uh, reinforced walls and also a, uh, a couple of brick buildings. Following their standard field research protocol, the team heads out again to document the early stages of the hurricane. I had never covered a hurricane that moved in so quickly, and this was my tenth. The team is caught off guard while videotaping in a residential neighborhood. All of a sudden, there was a very violent gust that, in my estimate, was probably over 100 miles per hour. We have flying debris all around us. We are caught in Hurricane Charlie. The team has just come face to face with the outer edge of a Category 4 eye wall. We're actually in the eye wall as it's striking. And that's where you don't want to be. The eye wall itself was about a 10 mile wide diameter region, uh, basically uh, F2 tornado strength. So this was like a large tornado cutting right through the landscape. We started seeing chunks of roofs flying by, uh, large branches flying by, uh, rocks were being picked up off the ground. I remember these, these objects flying by and striking the car, thinking one of these is going to shatter the windshield and come in here and hit us. Charlie's destructive winds shattered the team's plan to return to their original shelter. Our car was shaking around. We couldn't move the vehicle. The wind was blowing so strong, had we turned right or left, it would have broadsided the car and flipped us. Though Greg and Jim are temporarily protected by their SUV, it doesn't provide the security they urgently need. The car was literally being pushed down the street. He had the brakes on, and we were just rattling around. And that's when Greg saw a carport that protruded from a, a nearby house. Let's just see if we can get a little uh, lull. Okay, we're moving. We're still rolling. We're moving. We're trying to get up under some shelter. The team drives up just as Charlie's strength intensifies. Oh, my God. Stuff's, uh, uh, stuff's disintegrating around us. Oh, man, we got trees coming down around us. We've got roofs coming off. Oh, man. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. And I think that's when I realized that not only was this a hazardous situation, but this was a life-threatening situation. Oh, my 10th hurricane. I've never been anything like this. Never. Greg and Jim watch as the hurricane transforms the neighborhood into a combat zone. Ordinary debris becomes deadly projectiles. Any object that's, that's loose and not secured somewhere, if it is basically picked up by the wind, it can become like a bullet. Oh my God, here comes another one. It's bad, it's bad. Oh. Hang on, Greg, hang on. Oh. oh my God, oh my God. But as the Category 4 hurricane roars past the carport with its vicious winds, the shelter itself becomes a threat. We have been experiencing winds in excess of 100 miles an hour. It is tearing off roofs. This pretty good sized aluminum or metal shed uh, off to the side of the house just came right at us and just, we took it right on the chin. Both men reel from the impact. We are in Hurricane Charlie and we are hanging on for our lives. 
We never intended. We never intended to get this close. When we come back with this special hurricane edition of Full Force Nature, it's man versus the elements as the eye of Hurricane Charlie approaches. But can the chasers get to shelter before the storm gets worse? Oh my God. Welcome back to this special hurricane edition of Full Force Nature. Jim Reed and Greg Zamarippa are documenting Hurricane Charlie when things start to get out of control. Caught away from their planned shelter, they're struggling to find refuge from the deadly winds. At that point, Greg decided the safest thing to do was to get underneath the research vehicle. But what we didn't realize is the vehicle's still running. When I got underneath there, I remember I burned the back of my neck on the muffler. As soon as Greg's under the vehicle, some relatively large object comes flying into the carport and hits me in the back of the head. And at that point, I just said, I'm going down. As both men desperately seek the car's protection, they are slammed with more violent, sustained winds of the eye wall. It was just white. It looks like you're in a car wash and the water is spraying by so rapidly. I know that even though we couldn't hear each other speak, we were thinking the same thing. How much more of this can we take? Suddenly, it begins to get brighter. The sun started to come out. And then we realized that, that we made it. That was it. It was the eye. It was coming. Oh, oh, was that the eye? It was the eye. Oh, he can look straight up. The eye of the hurricane may provide the break the two men desperately need. Once you cross into the eye itself, it's just the strangest contrast that you can, can possibly imagine. The team rushes to find new shelter before the southern eye wall, the far side of the storm, strikes the neighborhood. So Greg went from door to door, pounding on them, trying to find somebody at home. And I vividly remember running down the street, and uh, Jim McDonald came walking out of the house. And he seemed pretty either curious or wondering, you know, what are you guys doing? Well, I see these two guys, they, they're running toward the house, and uh, they said, can we seek shelter in your home? And I said, sure, come on in. I wasn't going to leave anybody outside in that storm. Thank you. Greg and Jim finally have a safe refuge. They were scared, just plain scared like I was. Jim and Wendy McDonald provided us with shelter, which we were extremely grateful for. Though the second half of the eye wall batters the house, everyone inside survives. I feel very lucky that uh, Greg and I walked away with, um, you know, minimum injuries uh, during Hurricane Charlie. It could have been a lot worse. If they hadn't found my house, both of them would be dead. There's no question in my mind. Oh, man. Against the odds, Greg and Jim lived through this violent Category 4 hurricane. Their experience has forever altered each man. I've never been so frightened. I've never been so close to the edge. Hurricane Charlie was one of the most fascinating and the most terrifying weather experience I've ever lived through. I've never been the same. When we come back with this Full Force Nature Hurricane Special, see the dramatic rescue of two fishermen plucked from choppy seas when Hurricane Claudette barrels over Texas. Welcome back to Full Force Nature's Hurricane Special. The United States Coast Guard has protected the nation's ports and waterways for over two centuries. And when Hurricane Claudette strikes Texas, the Coast Guard Air Station in Houston is prepared to jump into action. We started really uh, seeing and hearing the effects of it uh, at about 5 in the morning. Coast Guard controllers receive a report that two shrimp fishermen set sail before the storm, only to have their boat destroyed in the fury of Claudette's 85 mile an hour winds. Lieutenant Brian Kostecki and the rest of the Houston Air Station race into action. We launched right away into uh, some pretty heavy rain. We had uh, 50 knot headwinds and making the transit take about twice as long as it normally does. After finally reaching Sabine Pass, the Coast Guard rescue crew must survey miles of dark waters and wind swelled waves for two tiny shrimpers. To make matters worse, 
Search and rescue controllers inform the crew that oil has spilled in the water surrounding the men. We spotted the sheen in the water. Upon getting a little bit closer, a little bit lower, we saw two uh, orange bobbing bodies in the water. Now, with the needle in the haystack finally found, the next challenge presents itself. With the uh, storm surge still approaching and high waves crashing over them, even with the life jackets, they were uh, still struggling to stay above the water. Finally, after nearly two hours in the brutal waters, the fishermen are brought safely aboard the Dolphin helicopter. Despite their boat sinking to the bottom of the Gulf, the two fishermen escape with only a few minor injuries. The U.S. Coast Guard saves 15 lives a day, and in the wake of Hurricane Claudette, these two Texas fishermen may just be the happiest of them all. That's all for this special Hurricane Edition. Tune in next time for even more amazing encounters with all types of weather on Full Force Nature. To be sure that you are prepared for the full force of nature, your local forecast is next, right here on the Weather Channel.